Hey everybody, Chris Petrie here. Welcome, welcome, come on in. We're having a great time here. We're gonna be doing a beautiful ink and wash of a lighthouse, beautiful water, sky washes, the lighthouse, some rocks. Um, let's zoom back just a touch here, see our painting. So this is what we're gonna work on. This is the finished painting. You can, you can draw and sketch from this painting if you want, and even use this portion right here, right now, to um, work your whole painting right from this uh, beginning part of the video. Um, my suggestion always is, if you can watch the video full through, see the whole process, and then you go back a second time through the video, step by step along with us here, and then you'll see we can all paint together and get this painting done. And it, it's a beautiful painting with the ink, and we also talked about how, we're, we're gonna cover all this in the video. If you were using ink, we're using ink with bamboo pens. So we're gonna use an ink well. We're gonna pour in some ink into this small well, and then we're gonna do our ink drawing. First, we're gonna get a pencil drawing in, a light pencil drawing of our scene. Then we're gonna use the ink, get the ink drawing done, let that dry 100%, and then we're just gonna go over and have a free fun time putting all those washes on there, these beautiful colorful washes. And you're gonna see that we have a simple palette, so this is gonna be our palette of colors. We'll cover all this in this video. It's a very doable, fun, exciting project for those of you, I know you watch my videos all the time. Every, every once in a while, I'm gonna break out some inks and do some ink and washes, and this is another time we're gonna do it. You'll have fun, you'll have an exciting time, and we also all mention that if you don't want to use the inks, because inks can be messy, they can make a terrible time of things on the furniture and the carpeting and things like that in the house. You can use Sharpie markers. So we're gonna cover that too in this video. We're gonna cover how you can use Sharpie markers and even an office pen like this to do all of your ink type drawing with Sharpie markers and pens versus using ink if you don't wanna use ink. And that's as simple as that. So we're covering a jam-packed full video here of all the information you can have with your watercolors. Let's call this a mixed media um, tutorial where we're using mixed media watercolors, inks, or even gonna use some pens if you want. We use some pens at the end of the video to do some details. You'll see it all on this video. Have a great time, enjoy, and we'll see you in just a few minutes. We're gonna start the painting by laying out the painting with our pencil drawing first, okay? So, we'll be right back. All right, hello everyone. You've seen the finished painting, of course, and this is Chris Petri here. So, we're gonna start out by doing our preliminary sketch on this uh, wonderful lighthouse painting. This is gonna be a really simple kind of um, idea on using some inks, uh, uh, actually black ink with watercolor wash. So we're just gonna use some simple colors here, uh, olive green, uh, some permanent rose, cerulean blue, and cadmium yellow. So that's gonna be our simple color scheme here. Just gonna use a couple different colors. We're not gonna use a lot of mixtures of colors. We're just gonna kinda use the beauty of just straight out of the tube colors. No mixing involved here. This is a real uh, simple, fun composition you can do. And um, if you have a larger palette, um, you can also do a little more mixing of colors if you want, but for this painting, I'm just going to use straight color, not much mixing. Uh, the only mixing that will happen is on the paper naturally, so you'll see some natural mixing of colors, mixing and mingling of colors on the paper once we start painting. And you did just see the finished painting, so you kind of can see how that goes and how that happens uh, when you just put down uh, straight color onto your paper and you let it mix and mingle on the actual paper itself. So, and then the only thing we're gonna do different too is many of you know I do ink and wash every uh, once in a while. So that's gonna be no different. We're gonna use some Super Black uh, India ink by Speedball. This container I've had for 10 years and it's still half full. So this is just a great investment if you're gonna uh, purchase some black ink to do ink and washes. I do these often, ink and wash. Uh, you can do straight black uh, ink on paper with just white paper and black ink. Do some beautiful compositions that way, artwork, paintings. I've done that a number of times. People have hired me to create um, paintings of that type of nature. 
uh, just doing black and white, basically ink on white paper. Uh, with like, you know, I, I think I did uh, some New York, uh, New York City scenes with just black and white ink on paper. Some beautiful uh, bridges from New York City. There's a, there's a do there's dozens of bridges in New York City where I live nearby. People have hired me to do some beautiful bridge scenes with some nice, uh, beautiful arching bridges going across from New York to New Jersey and to the different boroughs in New York. So I've done a lot of black and whites with um, this type of um, ink, the uh, Super Black Indie Ink by Speedball. So we're going to use that in this composition, in this painting. And then uh, real simple, I, I, um, I just have a simple uh, bamboo, uh, bamboo uh, pen. And we use this bamboo pen and a small uh, inkwell. I get these online. You know, you can get like a dozen for like five dollars. So you can get ten or twelve of these for five dollars. They last you forever. When you're done with the ink inside your inkwell, like this, this plastic inkwell. When you're done with the ink, you just clean it out with a paper towel or a, or a tissue, and you can use this. You can use this hundreds of times if you want. So you'll have these forever too if you buy these. Or you can just buy maybe five or six, I think. You can buy them, like, uh, by the piece, too. So these are not really high-ticket items that are going to cost you too much money. Uh, this bamboo pen is maybe $5 or, or 6 or $7 online. You can get these um, online. You can use chopsticks. I sometimes will use uh, uh, chopsticks from uh, Chinese uh, when I buy Chinese food. Often at home, I save the sticks, the Chinese uh, chopsticks, and you can use them. You can whittle down... The, with a small um, knife, you can whittle down the edges of the um, chopsticks, the wooden chopsticks, to make uh, beautiful bamboo pens. So you can actually do that too, and I use these as well when I do uh, ink-type drawings. So you can, they have these too as well. Online you can buy these. These are just a little more, a smaller version of this, but it has two points on the ends. And these, you can get a little sharper points on these here. This one's got a little wider a less sharp point on the end. So maybe we'll use both of these in this uh, ink and wash. So that's basically all you need. And then just, of course, a simple pencil to get your pencil rendering in first, light sketch first. And then you'll go over that with your ink, let that dry 100%, and then we'll put some wash over the top. This is a real fun, exciting uh, video. You're going to just uh, have it an enjoyable time. Watch it once through, maybe, and then maybe you know you. I know some. I know many of you have inks uh, because we've been doing ink and wash on my channel for five years. So I know many of you already went out and you you have your inks in your uh, studio. Uh, you know, and you use them once in a while to do some projects and things. And whenever we do ink and washes, I'm sure everyone uh, breaks out their inks and stuff like that. But maybe some of you that are newer and you haven't tried out some uh, ink and wash paintings. They're so much fun. They're a little more lighthearted type um, paintings. So we're going to start out here. We'll get our, we're going to do a lighthouse, of course. We saw that. And uh, I'll put this over here, of course. And let's uh, set these over here. And we'll set that there. And then basically what I do is I kind of look at the composition. And I pretty much, the uh, light is coming from The light's coming from behind, from in front of us. So we're painting with the light. We're facing the light here. The sunlight is in front of us, shining into our faces. So the shadowing is going to be basically, um, some of the shadowing would be in front of the objects, but it wouldn't be to the sides because the, the light's coming this way. So the shadowing in this painting will be kind of minimal as far as seeing shadows on the sides of objects. like. So if we have an object here, like a lighthouse, we won't see a shadow like this on the side of the lighthouse. Because if we have a lighthouse here like this, and the light's coming from the right, yes, you'll see a shadow on the right. But since we have um, the light coming from in front of us, if anything, we'll, if the lighthouse is here, we might see a shadow in front like this, in front of us, like so. So that's just something to keep in mind. And then uh, maybe I'll just cover over that because that could be a distraction um, for some people. So I try to, uh, and this is a little bit, uh, maybe I'll try to just cover over that a little bit anyway. But this is basically the light. The light's coming from in front of us, facing us this way. So we'll just remember that. 
and then we're going to start out. And then our composition is going to be um, basically thirds. So we're going to divide our paper into thirds from top to bottom. So we'll go one third up approximately. There's one one line here, so that'll be our ocean. Um, and then we have another third up here, and another third up here. So the bottom third is going to be, I'll put my line across here very lightly. And then our lighthouse is a little off-center, so as long as you remember for the lighthouse here, we're just going to shift it over a little bit so it's not quite center. So if this is the center of the picture right here, we're going to maybe do our lighthouse to the left or to the right of that center. So if this is center here, we're just going to go a little bit to the, to the right of that. And here we have some the foundation for the lighthouse where like that so that's our foundation for the lighthouse and then the White House is here so we're gonna we're gonna go up like this top of the lighthouse is almost to the top of the picture frame so if this is our picture frame up here and we'll just go around our picture frame like so like that. And then you also might ask yourself, will this fit into a standard size mat? So let's try this. You can see that this is a, a standard size mat you can purchase in the uh, local uh, hobby shops and art stores. So in that case, when we're doing our painting, we want to try to make sure that let's use that frame of this mat in our painting so that we kind of work within this area because this is what we're, we're going to put this on top of our finished painting and then put it in a frame and this will all fit together beautifully. This is custom made to fit inside a, a standard size frame. So if you're going to frame your paintings, you want to have everything in your paintings working out to the standard sizes of frames and mats. So this is a standard size mat that'll fit into a standard size frame so you can take your mat, put it onto your paper as you're working and say, oh, aha, uh -huh. let me take this and make sure that my painting is going to fit inside this. I do a light, super light sketch line where the mat is, like that. Can you see that? That's just to say this is actually where the mat is going to go over top of the painting. <clears throat> and you can move it around. If you gently erase that line so that it's just barely visible, you'll never see that. Once we're done painting, you're not going to see that line that we just made for the mat, the mat frame. So that's what I do. I erase it just so I know that I have to at least think about that mat going over the top of my painting. Okay, so that's one consideration we have, and that's really, we'll continue working on our uh, drawing. So we're just going to draw our lighthouse here. And again, the lighthouse is almost to the top of the frame of our painting, so we're going to... This is the bottom portion of the lighthouse. It's quite substantial, a lighthouse. It's pretty wide in the, at the bottom of the lighthouse, the bottom cone of the lighthouse. And then there's our railings that go around, like so. And then we step in a little bit, like so. And that is sort of angled too. So here you're remembering that with your lighthouse, the lighthouse itself is a cone, or a cylinder, basically a cylinder, but it's tape, tapering up like this. So you want to make sure you have that. Does that make sense? Can you see that? This lighthouse is angled up on each side the same way, angled a little bit this way and angled a little bit that way. We would want to avoid just drawing it a straight line. So you want to have a little bit of that angle on there. If you can get that angle, you're, you're all set. And the same thing up here too for the top section of the lighthouse. Uh, those 
the top portion of the lighthouse is angled as well, same, same angles as the bottom. So they basically follow the same angle. Like that, like that, and like that. And then you have that completed, and then there's more railings up top here. Like so. And again, we're not going for super accurate. We're going to have fun. This is going to be a loose rendering of this scene. If you can imagine, it's a, a fun, loose, good time we're doing here. We're not concerned about getting everything so com incredibly accurate. We're just kind of trying to get the basic concept of things. This is the lighthouse. You can see it's like a cylinder going straight up. It does have an angle to each side and the same angle on both sides as it, tape, it uh, steps up and then goes up to the next section here. And then the light is at the very top. And that steps in two a little bit, so the light is actually tapered up this way. And then you have the top of your lighthouse, and that's quite... Uh... And lighthouses have a beautiful feel. It's a... Lighthouses are great because they are, like, helping the, the sea, the mariners that are out in their boats and their ships, they're... If they're in a storm, they need to see the lights of the lighthouses to help them to stay along the shore. And then they know they're getting near to the rocks and all of the things along the shore. So these lighthouses are really an important part of the um, seafaring people that work on the oceans and fishermen and people that work in the industry, the maritime industry. So to them, this is a salvation seeing the lights of the lighthouse. So we want to have fun painting this and realize it's a very beautiful and important part of the people that work out on the oceans and in the uh, maritime industries. So here we notice that again the lights coming from behind us or actually in front of us coming this way so all these the lighthouse and everything is going to be all darker. It's not going to be having any kind of light shadowing and things like that. It's just going to be a darker shape. And we'll, sh we'll see that as we go. So you can see we have the, the railings here. We're just going to put some lines across there for the railings. Let's get the windows. Um, we're going to get the supports for the underside of the um, railings so these railings have supports underneath them same up here you're going to have supports underneath the railings for the lighthouse you're going to have when we have windows on the lighthouse there's four sections on the lighthouse of steel this is a this is actually a steel structure so these are uh, steel um, steel plates that go around the whole lighthouse and there's four sections of steel plates like this so if you can imagine it's got four sections of steel plates like that and then in this section here we have a window basically it's the, in the center of the window like that then there's another one over here in the next section down so I made four sections of steel plates that go, that make up the structure of the lighthouse right here. You can see that. So we have a light here. And I'm going to go over this with the ink. So you'll see when I'm done here, the ink is going to, we'll have the ink over the top of this pencil line. The pencil line might be a little bit hard to see, but you're going to see we're going to go over it again. So don't worry about it right now. Just kind of notice that I'm getting my pencil lines in. And uh, we have that. Then over here, we have some rocks. And these are the rocks in the ocean. Okay, so there's some rocks over here on the left, and then over here we have the ocean waves. 
and that's it. Rocks are on the left, ocean waves over here on the right. Then far in the distance here we have a distant shoreline, way miles away, probably a couple miles, two, two, three miles across that water. There is a distant shoreline and it goes all the way across here. So we're going to get that in there, distant shoreline. And now we're pretty much all set. The, we're going to just do a little pencil lines here for the ocean waves splashing up. So we just want to have those ocean waves crashing into these rocks and splashing up. So I just put a couple pencil lines to just make sure I'm going to not to forget that we're going to do some of those splashing kind of feel over here on the left. Other than that, we're all set. We're going to take a break now. And then when we come back, you're going to see how we're going to go over this with our ink, with our bamboo pens. So we're going to go over this whole drawing after we did it with pencil first to get it down on the paper, just so we know where everything is. Then we'll go over it with our um, bamboo ink pens and some ink, some super black India ink from Speedball. Then after that, once that dries 100%, then we're going to go over with our beautiful, uh, just a simple color scheme here, some red, yellow, blue, and green, just to get some color wash on here. And you're going to really enjoy this one. So let's come back in just a few minutes. Let's take a break. Uh, and then when we come back, we're going to start putting in our ink. And you'll see that it starts to really come together when we put our ink on. You'll see everything looking beautiful, looking exciting. And um, we're going to have a great time. So stick with us here. We'll be right back. All right, hey, it's Chris Petrie, and we're back again, and we're going to start working on our ink and wash here of our beautiful lighthouse with some rocks and some crashing waves and a beautiful ocean uh, breeze here coming through, and then we're going to have our distant shoreline and our lighthouse here. We're going to have a wonderful time. This is going to be our ink, Super Black Indie Ink by Speedball. We're going to just give it a quick... Now... <clears throat> I should I should mention this, whenever you work, whenever you work with the uh, ink, black ink, and any kind of inks in general, they're less forgiving as far as if you spill anything. So if you have a really nice place, you know, if you're if you're working in your living room or your kitchen and you have really nice furniture, things like that, always remember to cover all your furniture and your carpeting around the area that you're going to be working in. Because if this ink spills, you know, if you have your ink well and you bump into it and it spills and then it runs down and lands on the floor or on your chair or anything like that, that this will, you know, this is hard to clean off of any kind of furniture or carpeting or anything like that. So the only thing with when you're doing your ink and washes and your ink and wash type paintings, always remember you really got to cover the floor with some blank or sheets or whatever you got wear some old jeans and t-shirts don't wear any fine clothing or you know favorite things you might have that you like for your clothing because if you get any you know any India ink on your clothing and stuff and carpeting or furniture it's going to ruin it so that's the only thing I say with India ink that's you know you have to plan just for that a little bit of head of ahead of time other than that you're all set and then what I'll do is I'll just it's not good to really Pour, pour ink and stuff over your finished painting. You, we, we've just spent like 20 minutes drawing and carefully drawing our pencil drawing here to sketch this in. We don't want to go ahead and start spilling ink on this and ruining it. So you would put something down like a piece of paper if you're going to work like this, you know, on top of your table, your art table. Put something over, cover your painting so that nothing happens to it, and then you can pour in your ink. And this is really, you can see the, the cap is a really for the India ink, the cap is really nice. It's got a little spout on the end. You open it up and you just pour it in like this. And all you need is a little bit in the bottom of your ink well, like maybe just a quarter of an inch of ink, maybe just that much of, of ink, tiny bit. You don't need a whole lot, you know, quarter inch is fine. So then once you have that in there, we're going to take our bamboo ink pens and we have two. These this one here has a little bit more points to it. You can kind of see that. So this one has, you know, a sharper point on there. And this is more of a larger one. So, and the thing with indie ink and doing ink and washes is you want to have a variation of thick and thin lines. So you might want to have a few lines like this. Right? Then you might want to have a mixture of some of these type of lines. A little bit thicker. So 
So you'd want to have, if you can imagine, see now that's what happens. I just spilled my ink, but notice I didn't spill it on my paper because if, <laughs> if it happened on my paper, that would ruin our whole composition we just did with pencil drawing. So that's why um, I'm very careful. I always put paper down first. So let's do that. Let's simple fix is we just blot up this here with some paper towel. And this is like a perfect uh, run, you know, like this is a, you know, a perfect run through of how we work with, with ink and wash. You have to have things covered just in case things spill. That's all. So once that spill happens, you just quick, you lift it up with some paper towels. And if things start rolling around, no problem. My my work table is on an angle, so everything always rolls around and stuff. And uh, I deal with it, whatever I have to. But you can see, we just fixed that fine. Okay, so that's all. We've resolved that issue with no problem. Again, we get our ink. We have to pour more ink in here. And here we go. About a quarter inch of ink in the bottom of the ink well. And now I'm just going to, again, I just mentioned, try to get, when you're doing your ink and wash drawings, which, does this make sense? If you have a nice variety of some really fine lines and then some thicker lines, that's going to look much better than just doing everything with thin lines or everything with thick lines. If you mix up your lines in varying degrees of thickness, that's going to look much better. You're going to get more of a, you know, um, it's going to look more interesting on your, your uh, finished painting. More variety. Variety is good. <clears throat> okay, so I have my inkwell here. I'm going to go with my larger bamboo pen first. I usually dip it into the ink first and then just tap a couple times just to tap off any major drips that are on there. And that's all. And then I just go down like this. And we want to do this fun, free, happy, no real... Let's not get too fussy, all right? Let's have a good time in he with this. And um, I think, see how I'm doing this kind of quick? You go as fast or as slow as you want to. Some of the railings I'm going to leave with the finer. We'll use the smaller bamboo for the uh, finer areas. I'll make it darker under here a little bit. And uh, up here we can do this with the thicker bamboo. This up here. Okay, and then this is... There's a little square up there. And you're going to use this for your drawing. So once I'm done with my ink drawing, you can use this to pencil draw your painting. Okay, so you see how I have some thick, this is my thicker lines, the thick lines of my, and this over here too, we're going to have these, oh, look at that, ooh, the rocks over here, make them beautiful, fire in that uh, ink, scratch it around, but make those sharp lines of the rocks, rocks are sharp, they have those straight lines to them. I think you'll see that, and then some. Put some, put some waves in here like this. More rocks over here. See that? Have fun with this. I'm gonna put some. I'm scratching it in. This is the fun of ink and wash. You can really have a great time, just firing in your rocks and your shapes of your lighthouse like this, and you can splash a couple splashes on there, like this, you can make this shut up this way a little bit more, like that, okay, perfect, over here, look at this, this is all dark darks, get that in there, the dark darks of the rocks below the lighthouse, the foundation of the lighthouse is on rock. So they're on the rocks here. And the lighthouse is on the rocks and you can splash a couple more times here. 
and then you can go over here and that's going to be the ocean over here. And so we don't want to put too much darks over here. We want to keep them over here where the rocks are below the lighthouse. Okay, like that. And like that. That's the rocks of the lighthouse. And that looks pretty good. Um, what else do we have? That's pretty good. Now we're going to go with um, a couple more splashes over here. And you can see I'm doing the water, the waves here. Just some movements of what they get smaller over here. Like that. Then we're going to do some lines like this. This is where you get creative. Not, not too much ink over here though. Just a little bit of a tiny bit of ink for the splashing over here. Just some indications of some movement of lines, but not, not too much. You can kind of see how I went very light with the ink. I almost just let all the ink run off and you know, uh, there was no ink really left on my bamboo pen except for a t little tiny bit. And that's where you get those little bit of lines for the, the splashing of the crashing of the waves against the rocks. And we'll do that with some paint too. All right, so then now I rinse off my uh, ink pen in the water bucket and just wipe it off with a uh, paper towel or with a uh, tissue just to wipe off my bamboo pen. We're, Done with that. Now we're going to go to our smaller, finer bamboo pen, this one here. Okay. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to find the side of the pen that looks most... This one here looks like it has more of a... That one there looks pretty... We can use this side here. We're going to just finish up with the, the fine... The fine uh, railings. Can you see that? We're just doing the fine railings now. The fine... Um, iron railings around the tops of the lighthouse where the catwalks are. This is where the uh, people that uh, maintain the lighthouse, they will walk around the lighthouse at the top here around these catwalks where the railings are. They'll paint, maintain this lighthouse as they go. As time goes on, they have to repair things and work on things. They might go up here as an observation deck too as well and they can look out into the ocean on a clear day. And then we have our top of our lighthouse here, and there's some more lines up here. So I take a little more ink there, just, I dip my bamboo pen in the ink, then I wipe off a little bit of the ink and tap it off so there's not too much on there. And then I just put that there so that there's more um, details that we have here. There's some glass of the top of the lighthouse where the light is and so we just wanted to put that in there and I think this over here we have a little bit of a there's another window over here on the side and then another one over here we can see a little bit those are the frames of the windows over here is a tiny bit of a frame showing around the other side of the lighthouse and the same thing over here there's a little bit of a frame there of a window that looks good there's a more there's another catwalk down here so let's put that in so you'll see the little steel railings that go along the catwalk here. Let's get those in. We'll just put a, a railing across this way and over here like this. Like that. And I think that's all. That's really good. <clears throat> okay. Let's take another break. Uh, once we get done with this, when we're doing our ink, portion when we're doing our ink part of this here. The main thing is right now you have to let this dry 100% of the way. So does this make sense? It's sort of like when we're doing glazing techniques with watercolor. When you do your first glazing of wash, light wash of paint, you have to let that 100% dry before you go back in and start working on top of it. This is the same technique you're going to use with your watercolor ink and wash watercolor paintings. Once you do this ink, drawing on top of your paper, you have to let this dry 100%. You can't start painting on top of ink where there's wet spots because that'll drip and things will get really, really out of control. So just remember that. It's very simple. Once you're done with your ink drawing 100%, 
let that dry 100%. You can blow dry it if you want, or you can just let it dry for a couple hours, but you'll be able to see it. When you come back over to your ink drawing and you look on your paper, you'll be able to see if there's any puddles of ink that are still wet. You can't paint on that type of situation. You have to definitely let your ink dry 100%. You can always go in and um, take a piece of tissue. If you see a large puddle of ink somewhere on your drawing, your ink drawing, you can always take a piece of tissue like this and roll it up. And I wonder if you can see that. See how I rolled up that piece of tissue like that, like in a little point? Then you can go in and lift up a little bit of that puddle out of there, here and there. But you don't want to disturb those, those round uh, spots that you made. So if you make some nice beautiful round splashes of ink on your painting, you don't want to start rubbing on it or disturbing it. But you can take your tissue and make, and then, you know, twist a little bit of your tissue like this, or a paper towel like that and a little bit of a point and then you can lift up the puddle let's say so it'll dry faster does that make sense okay good we are all set let's let this dry 100 percent and then we'll come back and we'll just add some beautiful wash on here we'll be done it'll be a lot of fun and you'll see how you can make a beautiful ink and wash simple no nonsense it'll look great when we're done and you can put this in a frame you can give it as a gift you can put it in your house put it on the wall it's endless. You can make some cards out of it, some gift cards, um, occasional cards. You know, you make it a smaller composition. You can make cards out of this using ink, ink and wash. Ink and wash is an absolutely beautiful um, um, technique and method in the watercolor medium, the, you know, mixed media. So, you know, it involves watercolor and ink, which two, they work great together. Inks and washes of watercolor phenomenal works together great you'll see a lot of great artists out there doing this and i'm doing it here too i'm going to share it with you so you get the idea of how to create these beautiful paintings with uh, some ink and then you add some watercolor wash and you already have your watercolors you might have to just purchase some ink you could also do this with pen so i didn't mention that if you don't want to go out and buy the ink if you don't want to spill ink and you're afraid you're going to spill ink all you have to do is get some pens some sharpie pens and pe you can use an office pen for your fine lines. You can get your Sharpie pens like this. You can get the pens like that. You can even get you can take all of these pens here, Sharpie markers, and do the same thing. So hey, you know what? Maybe we'll do that next time. <laughs> Maybe in the next couple weeks or so, we're going to try this out. We're going to use Sharpie markers to do the same idea as we did with our ink and wash. Some of you already have ink. You like to work with ink. You've worked with it. Fine. If you think you might not like ink because, because it might spill, there might be an issue with it for some reason, you just don't want to try it, that's fine. You can take your pens, your Sharpie markers, and create the same idea that we have here using these the markers, the Sharpie markers, black Sharpie markers. That's all you need. Okay. All right. We'll come back and we'll add some ink to the uh, wash with this and we'll have a great time. Okay. We are getting started again. And I always mention, um, as we get started, if you haven't subscribed to my channel and you're having a lot of fun here, uh, please consider subscribing this way each week. You can come and check out what we're doing on our channel here. We're doing everything watercolor, and then basically on this uh, time around, on this video, we're just doing a little something different where we're adding in some ink with our watercolors. So basically, we're still in the same uh, genre of watercolors. Uh, we can consider this mixed media. Uh, and so you'll find that you can have some really good success with these type of paintings where you're just doing basic drawings and sketches with ink and then just applying some washes over the top with some uh, simple uh, washes of, of watercolors. So we're going to get started back up here again. And also I mentioned again, if you want to subscribe, it's right here on the bottom right hand side of your screen. There's the uh, subscribe button uh, and you can hit the subscribe button. And as well, there's a couple bells there. And if you hit all notifications, that means that each time we create a new video on my channel here, uh, you'll get that uh, notice uh, on your um, on your on your device, whether you have a phone or you have a laptop or a 
iPad or other device, you'll get that notification saying, we're here, we did another video, here it is, you can check it out, see what it, you know, if you like it, you might want to try it, you'll start working on it, or you might just watch it one time full through to get the feel for it, and then you might work on it the next couple of days after that. That seems to be the best process. That really works. Um, for most artists, you're going to want to preview everything first, watch it one time through, then as you go through it the second time, working on it step by step, you've already tr watched it one time, and you already have an idea of what's going on. That's the best way to do it. Okay, so let's get started up here again. We're going to have fresh, clean water. So here's my water bucket with fresh, clean water in there. The only thing I might be doing different this time is using a bit of a different brush. I'm using a Richeson. Uh, it's called a 20614 Squirrel. And this is a squirrel brush, mop brush, by Richeson, R-I-C-H-E-S-O-N, Richeson 20614 Squirrel. Really nice, medium-sized. It's a number four brush, a number four squirrel mop brush. Uh, seems to be perfect for your mid-range size paintings. If you're going to do a really large painting, you might need something a little larger than this. And if you're working in a smaller format, like a 5x7, it might be a little too large because it does hold a lot of water. But for this size painting, like a 10x14, works perfect. So what I'm going to do is wet this. I have a sponge next to the water bucket. I check off a little bit of water once I rinse off the brush. I check off a little bit of water onto that and then I go to my paper. So I'm going to put some fresh clean water on the paper here up in the sky, but not everywhere. Here and there, but not everywhere. So that's the key to this. Um, if you have a little bit of water here and there, but not everywhere, on your paper you'll get more variation. And that's what we're looking for. We're looking for more variation. If we were just to wet the whole paper, you know, that looks good too, but if you're doing it like this and you add just a little bit here and there and then maybe a little bit too in the water, a little bit here and there in the water but not everywhere, get some water on there, you'll be fine. You'll get lots of variation. So, now that we've wet our paper just a little bit with some water here and there, not everywhere, then we're going to go in and get our paints. And this is cerulean blue. Maybe a little bit of green mixed in there too in the center here. So we'll get a little bit of the green mixed in there. Okay, and then some sky wash. And again, you're going to have fun with this. You're going to just splash it on, have a good time. The lighthouse is darker, so we're going to put more paint in the lighthouse like that. Okay, so you want to make sure you... There we go. A little bit of green. Just a touch of green though, because we're going to put green in the water, so down here at the bottom, you want to have some green in the water too. And you can just notice, look how fast I'm working. That's the beauty of this. You don't want to be spending much time in here at all with your washes. You just want to take your paint and just f throw it on there like that. That's all you need to do. More than that, you're going to kind of get too fussy with it and it won't look good. So there you can see I just did a quick throwing on the paint, making sure my lighthouse looks darker because the light's coming from behind, from in front of us, coming this way, so you're going to see that lighthouse darker. So that's why I'm going to make this lighthouse darker, like this, green and blue. Green and blue lighthouse, like that. Then, purple. We'll need some red. Red and blue. Red and blue is purple. These are the purple mountains in the background, over here. Then we take that purple and blue and we add some into here and there, everywhere. You want to have some purple and blue because all the colors are happier when they're all mixing, mingling together. If you're just doing 
colors and not mixing and mingling them together, they're not going to look good. You've got to match, match, and match them all together, mix them all together. So now you can see I took my purple and I mixed them all together. Um, on this painting. Can you see that? That's going to look much better than trying to just So if you take that purple and mix it everywhere bit in the water. You have some along this here. You're putting some purple in the lighthouse too, in the center of the lighthouse, like so. And then maybe we're going to use a little bit of the yellow too. Put a little bit of yellow in there, but not much. The yellow is just a little bit. And again, if you put yellow, uh, and I definitely wanted to incorporate a little bit of yellow into this to mix in, you have to put it everywhere, but in very subtly though, not every, you know, not a large amount, just a little bit everywhere, a little bit of spots of yellow here and there throughout the entire composition. Like that. And then you can see how it all flows together. And then you can even drop some water on. You can drop some water on, clean fresh water, just to get that kind of watery look to it. Let it flow around the painting. And there we have it. And what we're going to do is we'll peel off the tape once this dries, so we'll come back one more time for one more session here. So we we flooded the paper with tons of water and beautiful washes of color. We used all of our colors here. We used our blue which was cerulean blue, permanent or uh, rose, sap, or this was uh, olive green and cadmium yellow. And then we wanted to make a little bit of a purple, so we took our cerulean blue and added it together with our permanent rose to make a purple. That worked out fine, so we got that purpley distant color there along the ocean behind the lighthouse. You have that purpley mountain area. And again, this is fun. Have a great time with this. Don't overthink it. You're having fun, you're putting lots of washes on the paper, you know, letting it look great. And I'm just going to wipe up some of the excess water that's dripping down on the bottom of the painting. And uh, again, wherever we put color down, we made sure we added that throughout the whole painting. So all of these colors here in our palette, all these colors are throughout the whole painting. We didn't just paint a blue sky and leave it blue and then that's it. No, we added the permanent rose in the sky. We added some cadmium, a little bit of cadmium yellow in the sky, just a little bit. Some green, just a tiny bit of green in the sky, mostly blue. But we did mix all the colors around the whole composition. So you can kind of see that here. And that's the main key to this painting is kind of mixing all the colors together to make it a beautiful unified painting of all the colors working together with that beautiful watery look to it. And then we have our gorgeous, exciting ink drawing underneath it. So you have the best of both worlds. Beautiful, exciting ink drawing with, on top of that, some gorgeous paints, watercolor paints mixed and washed over the top. And that looks fantastic. So we will 
come back in just a few minutes and we'll lift up the tape. We'll make sure this is all dry and we're going to um, be on to our next painting in just a few days or so. So keep coming back and uh, we'll have an exciting time together. All right. So we're going to come back in just a minute though and we'll uh, let this dry and then we'll peel off the tape and see how it looks. Okay, we took a little break, everybody, and that's always a good thing. Let's take some breaks. Um, what I'm going to do now is lift up the tape off the painting. You'll see it looks really good. We're going to move that palette of paint out of the way, too, and we're going to add some maybe uh, some details to this a little bit. And uh, this is where you can add some details with some uh, Sharpie markers, which we're going to do. You could use your, your ink again, um, but, you know, you can be creative. So I'm going to move this uh, to the side over here, my paints. Let me see if I can get this more on center here. All right, so let's kind of zoom in on this. Okay, so let's do that. There we go. All right, so now, um, like we said, you can use some pens and Sharpie markers. I'm going to take this Sharpie marker here. This is like your standard Sharpie marker you'll find in offices and the, um, you know, five and dime stores, wherever you have. We'll just take this and we'll just make a little more details. Like this here, you can do some details. There's some antennas up on top of this. Um, uh, the top of the light of the lighthouse. And then you can maybe make some darker sharper lines here where the windows are maybe just to and again as we said before um, you can use just more sharpie markers black sharpie markers to do this whole composition as well you don't have to use um, ink if you don't want to use ink you can use sharpie markers that's fine too so here we have some more details just to add a few things to our painting and I think that's good you know maybe a little bit of I think that's fine I'm trying to think if there's anything else we can use here you can do a couple more railings or something like that you can put some figures in there if you want to there might be some figures here working along the lighthouse so you can put some some people there a couple of figures over here maybe another person over here so you can do a couple figures if you want, like so. And that's pretty good. Now, let's see if we can zoom out just a little bit. And we'll put our mat over the top. Let's see how that looks. Let's zoom back a little. So you can kind of see how you can move your mat around on your painting. You can purchase a larger mat that has a, a larger window. But this here seems to work pretty good with this painting, this standard size mat. And then we can zoom in. Like this. So you can kind of see how that looks. Like that. So I think this has been a fun painting, everyone. Thanks for coming by. Thanks for watching. Thanks for all the great comments, the kind comments, the really insightful uh, things that you put into the uh, comment section, things that make us all uh, think about our watercolors more, ideas. There's some of you that really have some fantastic ideas that you put into the comments section. I want to thank you for that, too. Please always comment with your ideas, what you think uh, might be good for watercolors and for all of us to learn. Um, what kind of things you're learning yourself as you go um, the comments section. That's what that's for It's an open forum for us all to talk and I'm glad to meet up with you there too and say hello and wish you the best on your watercolors as well um, We're doing a great uh, uh, We're doing great work here. We're having lots of fun. We're learning all the time new methods new techniques and again this was the ink and wash technique we, and you can see how beautiful this looks just a nice simple rendition of a lighthouse in ink with some beautiful washes of color we kept it real simple we used a very simple color scheme of 
cerulean blue, permanent rose. We used olive green and cadmium yellow, and that's all we used. And we mixed and mingled those colors all through the whole painting, all of them together, some larger portions, some smaller portions, of course. We talked about how we used the um, blue, predominantly in the sky wash in the water, but we did add some greens and reds and yellows and purples throughout the whole composition. So again, we had a great time. We'll see you on the next video. Thanks again for watching and uh, have fun. Happy painting, everybody.